haven't heard um, too much talk about, but I did a little investigating into, and that is the connection between pica or pica um, and celiac disease. So. Um, specifically in children. So if you guys don't know what pica is, um, it's an eating disorder that's frequent in children in which non-nutritional and non-food objects are eaten um, persistently. Oftentimes it's clay, dirt, paint, and markers. Um, and in order for a diagnosis of pica to be made, there must be a history of persistent consumption of a non-food substance con um, continuing for a minimum period of one month. So. If your toddler ate Play-Doh yesterday, please don't freak out. Probably doesn't have pica. Um, so I thought this was interesting. The puzzling phenomenon of pica has been recognized and described since ancient times. Pica has been observed in ethnic groups worldwide in both primitive and modernized cultures, in both sexes and in all age groups. The word pica comes from the Latin name for magpie, a bird known for its unusual and indiscriminate eating habits. In addition to humans, pica has been observed in other animals, including the chimpanzee. Something to chew on. Um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> um, I first got interested in this connection um, when I noticed on the forums that people would say their celiac kids before diagnosis tend to have very peculiar um, eating habits that they would lick non-food items like metallic things like... Um, like poles, outside, like flag poles, and um, like to chew on permanent markers, and had this kind of, there was a big connection between that, and um, a lot of adults said they really liked the smell of chemical things like gasoline, paint, um, permanent markers, and such when they were younger, and this seemed to be a pretty big connection. Now, granted, you know, liking the smell of something chemical is not a huge correlation, but I thought it was interesting. Um, so I did some research and there is a big connection between pica and celiac disease. So this is an abstract from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that did um, a study on pica and celiac. So it says, persistent pica may be either a cause or a result of iron deficiency, which many, many um, studies show that it is. Children are described with long-standing pica and iron deficiency anemia and in who sorry and in whom total villus atrophy consistent with celiac disease was found on their biopsies. Additional findings included short stature, delayed bone age, and impaired xylose absorption. A dramatic growth spurt and complete resolution of pica were observed after a gluten-free diet in all cases. In these cases, pica evidently resulted from iron deficiency secondary to malabsorption. Underlying celiac disease should be considered in children with persistent pica and growth failure, even if gastrointestinal disturbances are minimal. So I thought that was huge, that there was just this strange connection, and then to see these studies, and this wasn't the only one, this was just one of the first ones I came across and had an excellent abstract to share with you guys. Um, so I just wanted to put it out there. I know a lot of people don't really talk about pica because it seems kind of be swept under the rug. If your kid is eating chalk or something, it's not something that you often share over the dinner table. But if for some reason someone in your family ha is, um, has pica or you, um, you know, have a friend who has a child that has pica, share with them to talk to their doctor about possibly starting a gluten-free diet um, or running tests for celiac disease because the fact that every single case was resolved on a gluten-free diet is um, pretty shocking evidence for um, resolution and uh, cure, if you will, for pica in children. So um, that's all for now. I hope you find this as interesting as I do and hope everyone's well out there. As always, it's from Have Not to Having Gluten-Free Dining.